Hey guys, so I just wanted to jump in here real quick and say welcome. If you are new or newer, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. I post a lot of content about exploring the great outdoors as an outdoor nature, wildlife photographer and filmmaker. And then from time to time, I also create some content such as the video you clicked on here, which is creating some adventure vehicles to be able to get out there and explore the great outdoors. But I'm not going to talk much more about that right now. I just wanted to st jump in here and say what's up and introduce this video, which is going to be all about installing a 52 inch light bar on top of the van. And then we're also going to relocate some of the exterior scene lighting that we have already had on the van, but I needed to move it because the awning, which we installed in the last video. And if you guys haven't watched that and you want to give that a watch, you can click right up here. That awning was going to go right where our lights used to be. So I had to move those and we're going to be doing that in this video as well. And then the last piece, I'm installing electrical for our LP9 lights that I can't mount right now and you guys won't see in this video because I'm still waiting on the bumper, but I went ahead and did the electrical anyway. got below me is a Pathfinder 52 inch curved light bar. The top of our roof rack up here is slotted for that so I should be able to come down through the roof, hit the battery here and then I'll probably put the switch right here. So this uh, wiring kit came with a switch so that should fit right there nicely. And then I also have some other lights that I'm gonna wire up for the front that I'll probably put right there. And it's essentially the same looking thing. So then I'm gonna come down right through here, down and into uh, this area this is where the batteries are. I'm gonna plug it in there and then the switch will run through the floor up to where I was showing you guys earlier. Now the thing is though, the uh, I don't have bolts, it doesn't, didn't come with any hardware, it didn't look like for uh, me to bolt. So um, I might have to go to the store to get bolts for that. So I don't know, we'll see if I can work up the courage to start the electrical, not courage, the energy to work up, to do the electrical tonight, or um, get after it tomorrow morning, we'll see. I got help scheduled for tomorrow and I'm hoping to have all this put back together tomorrow. So that's why I'm probably going to push through it. Well, uh, the mounting of it seems simple enough. You just have these little feet that go on both sides and then there's a hole and you probably bolt that down and I can show you guys up there. There's a sp space for me to bolt that down. So if you look, that will probably sit just like that. Perfect. There's that little slot right there. So I wanted to jump back in here and talk to you guys about a quick issue that we ran into. Now, this is totally my fault and I'll explain why. When I was shopping for the light bar that fit in the cavity of our roof rack, I got sucked into a sale. Now the light bar that I ended up buying, I didn't really pay attention. I thought it would fit on the roof rack. Now a roof rack is actually slotted for a 50 inch light bar which are those slots I was mentioning in the video there. And I ended up buying a 52 inch curved light bar. Now I ended up getting an $1,000 light on sale for like $125, which is why I bought it. I didn't even think twice about double checking that. That's just totally on me. But the great thing is, is I was actually able to still fit this light bar on the top of the van. We just had to change things up a little bit. And, and so what we did is we actually flipped the feet backwards instead of them pointing out like it was supposed to. We actually flipped them in and then drilled new holes and then we were able to get it bolted down. So it looks great. Um, but I just wanted to jump in and talk to you guys about that real quick and kind of explain <laughs> that's totally my fault, but it actually ended up working out. So, so we first carefully measured and marked where we wanted the feet to go. And once we did that, it was time to start drilling the new holes. After that, we put the feet and the bolts through the new holes and cinched everything down. Now let's talk about how I mounted the small light on the side of the van. So 
So he used a strip of painter's tape on the back of the light and then marked where the mounting holes are on that tape so that I could use it as a template on the side of the van. With the tape in a place I liked, I went ahead and drilled pilot holes using a really small drill bit. I then later came back with a step bit and widened those holes to the appropriate size. There are three holes, two for mounting and one for the electric wires to go through. Okay, so now that I got those drilled out, I ended up using a step bit uh, just to make sure I didn't go past what I really needed to go past. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean everything up real good, make sure all the metal shavings are cleaned up, and then I'm gonna spray the holes with Rust-Oleum. So after a quick test fit, I knew that it was good. I decided to go ahead and put silicone in the holes and then along the edges of the light so that I could create a waterproof seal. Now with both scene lights secured and the electrical test is working, it was time to move back up to the front to expose the channels I would be using to run the electrical for the upper light and the LP9 lights. Now after looking back at this video footage, it is very difficult for you guys to really see what I'm doing because it's a tiny space and I had to move a bunch of electrical stuff out of the way to be able to get to what I needed to do. There's a grounded bolt there at the bottom underneath all of this OEM electrical unit. So there's two 10 millimeter bolts I just undid and I was able to pull a lot of that electrical supply out of the way. And then from there, I was able to ground both of the lights that way. And then for the positive side of the uh, terminals, there is a terminal there in the top right. If you're looking in the door, it's going to be in the top right portion of the vehicle there. In that terminal, there's going to be three, po uh, three positive power posts that you can put your lights on. There is a post that is fused for only when the vehicle is running. There is a, a fuse for when all the vehicle is or to have it always on and then I can't remember what the third one is but that middle post is what I ended up putting our lights on which is an always on fuse so if I flick the light on even if the vehicle's off the lights are going to turn on and then the last thing I did was I took both relays and there is actually already holes in the side of the box for the chair there and I just ran some extra bolts through and bolted that those relays to the, the side of the seat which you guys really it's hard to see again on this video uh, but that just kind of helped clean it up now the wiring harnesses that came with the lights were way too short so I ended up actually lengthening those wires I didn't really cover it in this video but if you guys want to watch some electrical stuff then watch my electrical video but essentially I just made sure to lengthen the wire with the proper gauged wire and then I just used butt splice connectors and some heat shrink to make sure everything was protected uh, when running. I then opened the hood and exposed the already run wire grommet, used my fish tape to pull through the LP9 lights, and that part was pretty much done. It was then time to use these awesome switches I got off of eBay to wire everything through. These switches are 3D printed to fit the actual slot which saved me a lot of money from having to get the actual version, which is about $90 per switch. I will go ahead and link these down below, just in case you guys want to grab your own. And that is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this, then please consider giving it a thumbs up. Now this is kind of wrapping up some of our van projects for the time being. I might have another one coming up in the future, but I'm actually working on getting this van sold, which will then open us up for another project I have coming along down the pipeline, but I'm not going to talk about that too much right now. So if you guys are interested and in, again, watching content that's all about exploring the great outdoors and you want to watch some photography, maybe learn some photography yourself, 
um, and then on some of this DIY kind of project stuff, then this is the channel for you. Uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. And right now I'm actually cook, working on something I'm very excited about that I'm not going to talk to you guys about for the next couple of weeks. Let's just say it's kind of a once in a lifetime thing for me. So I'm really, really looking forward to it and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So I'm going to go and take some more uh, NyQuil and knock out and try to get this junk out of my system so I can actually go experience this once in a lifetime thing. Peace out guys. Uh -huh.